I'm going to say you, let's do some math. Today we're going to be talking about the power and power of power flows. Let's look at this first problem here. We have 2 squared raised to the 4. What does that mean? By definition, that means 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared. But each of these is 2 times 2, another 2 times 2, another 2 times 2, another 2 times 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, by definition, this is 2 to the 8. But, let's look at the exponents. 2 squared to the 4, using the power rule, is 2 to the 2 times 4, or 2 to the 8. The whole point of these exponential rules is to save a lot of writing. So, you have an expression like this, immediately you can just multiply the exponents, and you get a result. Let's look at it more generally. If we have x to the m raised to the nth power, where x is any number, and m is what's called a natural number, natural number, which means 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. So, this similar to the numerical case, is x to the m times x to the m times x to the m. And there are n of those. So if this n is equal to 3, for example, that means there's x to the m times x to the m times x to the m. If it's equal to 10, there are 10 of those factors. If it's a thousand, there are a thousand of those factors. But, as we saw with the numerical case, each of these x to the m's is x times x times x. m factors of those. So, if we take m factors, Multiplying them, and each one of these becomes that, right? It becomes a multiplication problem of this many, that many times, n times. So x to the m to the n is x to the m times n, or just x to the m n. That's the power rule. If we look at this situation here, 2 times 3 cubed, what does that mean? That means 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. But using something called the commutative property of multiplication, which means that the order that you write the individual factors does not change the result, we can put the 2's together and we can put the threes together. So this is two times two times two is two cubed times three times three times three, which is three cubed. Now, the power of a product rule says we can go immediately, we have two times three to the third, we can just multiply, uh, raise the first factor to the third, and multiply that by the second factor raised to the third. That's the, pro that's the power of a product rule. Let's make it a little bit more general. Uh, if we have x to the m, multiplying y to the n, where m and n are natural numbers again, and we're raising that to the r, r power, where r is some other natural number. This is just going to be x to the m times r times y 
to the n times r. No matter what the first factor is, and what, no matter what the second factor is, we are going to raise that first factor to the power outside, and we're going to raise the second power up the second factor to the power outside and multiply those results together. Let's look at a similar situation with a negative number inside. We have negative 1 squared cubed. We saw before that negative 1 raised to an even power negative 1 raised to an even power is going to be positive 1 another positive 1 and another positive 1 Multiplying positive numbers doesn't change the sign. 1 times 1 times 1. So this is going to be a plus 1. Now, using the power of a product rule, we have negative 1 squared. Now, using the power rule, we have negative 1 to the 2 times 3, or negative 1 raised to the 6th power. Negative 1 raised to an even power, it's positive 1 again. So if we had this, uh, 2n, for example, where, which represents any, any even number raised to 2n plus 1, which is any odd number, this is going to be, well, let's, let's see what 2n times 2n plus 1 is. We know by distribution that 2n times 2n is 4n squared. And then plus 2n times 1 is 2n. So this is going to be minus 1 to the 4n squared plus 2n. Okay. We saw earlier that 2n is an even number. We saw, well, well, we didn't see, but any squared number, such as uh, a negative number, for example, is going to be a positive number. So this is positive. That's even. So 4 times an even number, or 4 times a positive number, is a positive number. It's a positive even number. An even number multiple, added to another even number is a, another even number. So this is going to be negative 1 to an even number. And so that's going to be a plus 1. Let's look at one more. We have running out of ink here, negative 7x squared cubed. By definition, this is equal to negative 7x squared times negative 7x squared times negative 7x squared. Okay. Uh, by the commutative property of multiplication, we can Rewrite these as negative 7 times negative 7 times negative 7 and x squared times x squared times x squared. A negative number multiplying a negative number is a positive number. So this is plus 7 squared. And I'm just going to leave it like this without actually simplifying what 7 squared is. And then multiplying a positive number by a negative number is going to be a negative number. So this is going to be negative 7 cubed. 
negative 7 cubed for just this part. Now, here we can use the product rule. x to the 2 plus 2 plus 2. And what is that? That's 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. This is x to the 6. Running out of ink. All right, let's use the power of product rule directly. So we have negative 7x squared cubed, and that's going to be negative 7 cubed times x squared cubed, which is, as we saw before, ne this is negative 1 times 7, negative 1 cubed times 7 cubed, and using the power rule, this is x to the sixth, running out of ink again. Now, a negative number raised to an odd power is negative 1. We have times 7 cubed again, and then x to the sixth. Okay, so this simplifies to negative 7 cubed x to the sixth. Now, all of this and more is explored in the pre-algebra workbook series that's linked to in the description. Thank you for watching.